we're all in agreement that ThreadUp has some really, truly ugly clothes. And don't get me wrong, I think it's an amazing site for online thrifting, but it's also just riddled with so many things that you just would never ever wear. I mean, like to find a true thrifted treasure, you have to sort through a lot of LuLaRoe, outdated styles from 2003, low-waisted jeans, and graphic tees and tanks with sayings like Hakuna some vodka. And I'm literally not kidding, that's an actual t-shirt I saw while preparing for this video. So I thought it would be fun to go onto ThreadUp, pick out some ugly clothes, and try to thrift flip them into something that doesn't look like my mom made me wear in middle school. So today, that's what we're doing. I'm very excited, don't know how this is gonna turn out, but I think it's gonna be a fun ride regardless. Also, hi, my name's Jess, and let's go. <laughs> Alright, so I have changed, set up the camera. I changed because one, it was hot, and two, I was wearing a black turtleneck, which I was like, I'm gonna pick up all the fabric scraps, pieces of thread, lint, cat hair as possible, and I was like, I don't really wanna be that hairy at the end of this video. So I wanted to make two really quick disclaimers. One, I don't really know if this video is gonna turn out. My sewing skills are not that great. I'm novice at best. We might have something cute, we might not. All of these thrift flips could be fails, but you know what? It's all about the journey. We're gonna try. This is not a tutorial. This is me attempting to thrift flip things from ugly to cute. Thing number two, just because these things are ugly to me does not mean they're going to be ugly to you. Things that I think are ugly, you might think are really cute. And things that I think are really cute, you might be like, Jessica, that's the ugliest thing ever. Fashion and style are so subjective. All right, so we are gonna start with this hot number right here. This is something I picked out because I thought this is something that the least amount of people who are on ThreadUp would probably pick out. It's got like big wine mom energy. It's got these white outline prints of different places in Europe. So there's there's the there's the Louvre, there's the Arc de Triomphe, there's the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so it might just be France. So definitely big wine mom energy. And then on top of it, on the front, we have sequins and beading. So it's definitely something that I don't think most people would choose, but I see potential in it. So my vision for this is as one of those one shoulder tank tops where it's just like, Choo. I thought that style with this print would take this top to a shirt you would see at Urban Outfitters for, I don't know, $24. The first thing I'm gonna do with this top is I am going to crop it. It is a bit too long for my taste. Let me change really quick. Okay, cool, all changed. So now let's figure out where I want to crop this. So the waist of my jeans is right here and it's maybe like one finger width above my belly button. So I think I want it right about there. Let's see, where's my safety pin? I had one somewhere, where could it be? So that's where I'm gonna want the hem to end. So I'm gonna cut about an inch longer off and then I'm gonna fold it up, I'm gonna hem it, and it's gonna be a thing. All right, so from here, I'm gonna figure out where I want to cut it. So I think that's about good. I think I've got it even, so now I'm just gonna cut it right across. Because of the sequins, that was not my most even cut ever. Got a little crunchy halfway through. But I think it'll be fine because we'll be folding up and under and we'll be hemming it. So you won't see my imperfections. We'll just know they're there. So now I'm gonna flip this inside out and I'm going to fold up where I want the hem to be. See, I feel like even though these clothes that I got on ThreadUp are ugly, they're still not the ugliest of the bunch because some were just too beyond me being able to be like, yeah, I could make something with that. Like a lot of it was just like, I I don't even know what I'd do with it. Like how do you thrift flip Hakuna some vodka? Like what do you do with that? Now let's chop these sequins off before they chop me. Ooh, okay, something I wanted to talk about while I did this video that I thought would be very interesting for you guys is every time I see like one of my friends or just like someone in general do a sponsorship with ThreadUp, so many people comment like, how did you find such cute stuff? There's never cute stuff on there. Like influencers or YouTubers or content creators must get like a special pick or whatever. Uh, that's actually not true. I wanted to dispel that because I've actually worked with ThreadUp. It was a doozy and a half to find the things that I found for my haul. It was not just like, I think I spent a collective maybe week and like three or four hours each day 
looking for things, to be quite honest. Well, that's kind of a cool shot. Oh, nice. Yes. Well, this is stretchy fabric. This is gonna be a tricky one. As I said in the intro of this video, there's a lot of ugly stuff on there. It took a lot of time to try to find stuff and hope like cute things would be uploaded. But all they do is they give you like a credit. So like, let's say they give you like $200 to spend and then you have to go through and find stuff and hope for the best. Hope you can find stuff for a haul. I've seen that comment so, so much like, Oh, they got the cutest stuff on there. Like ThreadUp hooked them up. I wish ThreadUp hooked me up when we did the collab because it was a long process to find cute things. Oh, they're never gonna work with me again, but it's cool. When I do do collabs or sponsorships, I want you guys to know that I really believe in the brand. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I do think ThreadUp has really, like it's a really neat thing. It's an online thrift store. Like that doesn't really exist. And there might be like smaller ones, but ThreadUp is the most like comprehensive. There's a lot to it, but also <laughs> there's a lot to it. Ooh, she's not cute. Not a cute scene. Do we start over? Do we keep going? How do you look on the other side? Slightly tragic. Okay. We're gonna start again. stuck again. It's these dang sequins. Did we all know this was gonna be a flop? Maybe. I'm just gonna keep going with this hem. We're gonna see what happens. I'll see you guys once I'm done with it because right now it's 10 years later, I finished this dang hem. It's definitely not the greatest. I will admit to that. It's not the greatest, but it's not also horrible. So that's what it looks like from afar. It looks pretty decent. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these sleeves off because you can't have a tank top with sleeves. That's just a t-shirt. It's looking cute. It's looking good. And on the sleeve I'm keeping, which I've decided I'm keeping this side and I'm going to cut off the left side, left about a quarter of an inch of seam allowance. So I can just bring it in to wherever it looks most flattering. Cool. It's not even marking. Do I just, I, no, I don't eyeball it. I shouldn't. No, 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 no. Maybe if it wasn't on me. Then I'm gonna take some pins and mark the general area. So I think I wanna bring it in probably like right here, here, here. Oh my gosh, this doesn't draw at all. What the heck? I don't even have anything else. You work with what you got, not what you don't got. Leaving space for the seam. I'm leaving a lot of space. Ooh, you know what? I'm not gonna put that on over my head. Why would I do that? I'm going to Take these pins out. Do I have any pins still in this? I don't want to stabby McStab myself. How are you looking? Okay, there's some potential still. Thing number one, bring this in so it's skinnier. Thing number two, fix this hem so it's cute. Thing number three, I gotta figure out what to do with this. Three big steps before this has its final future. Lay this down flat, inside out. Oh gosh, more sequins. Ugh. These are the bane of my existence, truly. You know, I really like thrift flips, but they, one, suck your soul out because they're tedious. Sometimes things just don't turn out how you wish they could. Sometimes you don't have the skills to do what you thought you could. And then the other thing is they take so dang long. So I'm just gonna do a little baby seam right along here and make it look nice. Come on, fingers crossed. Okay, this is not a bad sleeve at all. I mean, take a gander. That's not bad. So I'm going to just fold this all in and make it straight. The last thing to do on this top is just to fix this, this, this business. I'm going to do the thing where I fold, like do a little baby fold and then do another baby fold and then keep that across. And let's go, final stretch. And it only took three hours. Actually, what time is it? 4.56. Okay, so it took two hours. So by the time I finish this, I bet it'll be three hours. 
three hours for one top. I got this though. We got this guys, we're doing this together. And then the last, last thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these sequins. You know, I thought there was a chance of them looking cute at the end, like a little fun, they don't. These sequins on the shirt make it look like it belongs in a storefront in Las Vegas for like those shirts that have like the sequins and the glitter and they're like, I heart Las Vegas. All of these sequins, there are so many sequins. Like, why does a shirt need so many sequins? You guys, I just finished the one-sided tank top and I am so proud to say that it turned out so good. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be kind of a flop, but it turned out so perfectly. I'm so excited to show you. I'm so happy. Okay, let's, let's, let's see it. All right, so now moving on to this dress. Now this dress is not definitely the ugliest. It's actually, the print is quite cute. I really, really love the gingham black and white, but this style of dress looks flattering on very few people. It's one of those things that tense out on most bodies, especially if you have a larger chest, especially if you have maybe like broader shoulders. And it's like one of those things that always like sits and fits weird. So my plan for this is I'm thinking to make it into a two piece. So originally I was just gonna make it into like a skirt or maybe like change the style of dress. But after seeing these like really cute and fun sleeves, they're kind of like a ruffled bell, which I think is very fun. I think there's potential for this to be a top. Ooh, the seam ripper and the scissors are loose. I'm gonna put that to the side before I stab myself. The pockets are here. I'd want the waist to be here. Let me mark that with a safety pin. So this, do you see how like weird it sits? It sits right on the edge of my shoulders. So I could like pull it down, but it's one of those things where you like do anything and it shoots right back up. Ooh. That would be cute. I actually have the perfect three shirts to use as an example and kind of like a guideline for this. So if this top could have a baby with this top and this top, it would be, ooh, I pulled my, I don't know what I pulled. Charlie's horse? Oh my gosh, it feels like my foot just like gave birth or something. It feels like I stepped on a million Legos. Back to what I was saying before I hurt myself. If this top, this top, and this top could have a baby, it could be the potential of this dress. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start on the skirt first because I think the skirt is pretty straightforward. I did originally want to use this elastic for the skirt, but because I'm so I don't know, the top is so up in the air. I don't know what the heck to do with it. Ooh, this is gonna be a tight one. Okay, so I think I'm gonna cut on this line right here. Taking big chomping bites of your fabric does really make a difference instead of doing like a bunch of little cuts. It makes it so much more even. Also, my backup plan, if I can't get this top to be anything or I mess it up or it turns into what we like to call in Tagalog, Prahedja, which is tragedy. I'm just gonna scrap it and we'll just have a skirt. We'll have a cute summer spring skirt. Back to chomping. I don't know why, but saying the word chomp is making me really hungry. It's making me hyper aware that I haven't eaten dinner yet and I've had mediocre lunch. Oh no. Do you guys see this? Did I, mm, mm. How, how did I do that? I followed the line. I just double checked it and I didn't do anything wrong. I think this is cut unevenly. So I'm just gonna continue the uneven cut. Shirt, we'll deal with you later. Here we have our skirt. This is not the thickest elastic. I would definitely prefer if it was thicker, but I don't have a thicker elastic. Again, working with what I have, not what I don't have. This fabric definitely will gather a bit. So I'm gonna give it maybe like a quarter of an inch of slack. So here is the fabric. We're gonna cinch it to like this. Nice. 
So I think I definitely can pull. I'm gonna cut off this excess elastic, sew it in, and then sew in the other side, close up the hole. Then I'm gonna just adjust all the gathering to be more even, and then we're done for the skirt. This was really good. I'm glad I started with this because now I feel positive and motivated to take on that top. So I just finished up the skirt and it turned out pretty dang perfect. I'm really happy with it. And now we're going to move on to the part that genuinely kind of terrifies me because I could take this from being a cute skirt to a whole outfit, a whole set, but I have to get this top right. And this top, I think the first thing I'm going to start off with is by making a casing at the bottom for some more elastic so I can have a cinched bottom. So now let's thread through this elastic. I have the elastic in and I need to make it this width because this is like the perfect stretch. I love this top. So I'm gonna emulate the stretch of this. Cool, that's done. So now I'm going to sew the elastic together. Nice, the bottom portion done. So if I keep this like this, and then maybe if I cut here, and then I make like a triangle, this, I think that would be cute. But I'm really terrified to ruin this because the sleeves on this are so gosh darn good. Do I risk something that's okay for something that could be great, but also could fail miserably? Oh golly. Okay, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a slit here and a slit here and then I'm just gonna go got this is what we've got we've got a a little W going so what I was initially thinking was that we take this and make the slits and then I'd basically join it to make it like that I am truly so sorry I had no idea how dark it had gotten I think it was like that situation where like I don't know if you've ever been here but I've been here a lot one from being an internet person. And then also because I played a lot of online games when I was a kid, that phenomena of where you're on your computer so long, you don't even realize it gets dark. And then all of a sudden you look up from your screen and you realize you're sitting in the dark. That's how that experience was. So I'm so sorry. Essentially what I'm currently doing right now is I'm just safety pinning this into the eyeballed spot of like what I think might work for this. And then I'll try it on for you guys. Ooh, saucy. The kind of approximate safety pin. Take a look at this. Well, I'll be darned. Okay, so I think I definitely will make it a little bit more of a square necklace. What if I were to partially get rid of this elastic up here to make this square neckline a little bit more dramatic? I think I'll do that. I think I'm definitely becoming more confident in my sewing skills because I think before, like even today, I was like still pretty apprehensive about a lot of stuff, like making certain cuts, like cutting these sleeves. Before, I definitely would have been like, uh, I don't think I'll do it. Like, no, I think I would definitely take the safer option because I wouldn't want to, you know, like mess it up. But in this case, like I really don't give a heck. I went in with it, not trying to be like, all right guys, this is how you do it. I kind of went into this video being like, all right, I'm gonna try and make something, let's go. I think something I really need to work on is not focusing so on the end result, but more on just like having fun on the journey, as I mentioned very jokingly at the beginning, but like pretty truthfully that the journey is so important. I think I took more risks because I wasn't worried about like having a perfect end result and taking the risks literally led me to having a better end result. It was all about like the in-between part where I was just like, you know what, I'm just having fun. Sure, I'll give this a try. And it ended up perfect. So that's my lesson for you guys today. The journey is so much more important than the end result. Also, something I've noticed today is as I've been working on these projects, my stitches, my hems, have been getting better and better and straighter and more even, and it's been awesome. So here is the top. Here's the hem I just finished. So I'm planning on having this be on the outside, going like this. I'm just going to add a stitch right across here. 
I don't love it because right now it's like overlapping. I think it would look better if I folded back the two pieces of fabric and then sewed that together. So I'm gonna rip that stitch out because it looks a little weird. Oh my gosh, my back hurts from being hunched over this. Hold on, I'm gonna lay back for a second. Oh, grand reveal. Okay, not bad. I have made a boo-boo. I have messed up. Forgot that I was folding this down to crop it. I thought I would do the sleeves first, I guess. But now I have to seam rip what I just did back out. Thank goodness I did not cut these yet. So never cut until you're for sure ready. I'm so sad because especially the left hand side turned out perfectly. This is where we are currently. I have cut off the front ruching, the this bit, the stretchy bit. And oh my gosh, it looks so horrible over a shirt. And I left a little bit of room for seam allowance. So I'm just gonna fold that down, continue my straight neckline. And then I don't want to pull this all the way down because it's going to make the shoulders just too tight. So I'm gonna take this extra fabric from here and I'm going to attach it to here. And I'm going to elongate the sleeves and then connect it. So it's a nice square neckline. I think it's gonna work. We're staying positive. I'm not as excited as I was earlier, just because I've messed up, I think three times with these sleeves, shoulders, trying to figure them out because it's such a doozy. But you know what, we're doing it. So I will see you for this end result. I'm gonna make it a surprise. And that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this thrift flip. I, I had a lot of fun, but also there was something particularly soul sucking about filming and thrift flipping and sewing for eight hours straight. I'm like, I don't even know how it took so long to DIY, to thrift flip a top, a skirt, and another top. Three pieces, one of the same piece being made into two pieces, but like, I'm genuinely shocked at how long it took. So I actually could not return back to sewing. And I thought about doing like the third piece. I had this like orange, sir, I have this uh, orange cardigan that was going to be a part of this thrift flip, but then truly really did not expect to be that tired and that drained after doing the thrift flip that day. It was so crazy, but regardless, I had a great time and I'm so happy with the pieces I made. Like I'm genuinely shocked at how well they turned out. Like I really, I don't know. Like I talked about in the beginning, I kind of expected this to not go that well and it was just us going along for the ride, but it, it turned out really good and I'm so happy about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see a, another one, a part two to this where I do tackle this orange sweater. This is one of my favorite quotes ever. I think it is so lovely and just so accurate and I feel this on like the deepest level of my heart. So today's quote says, you can't pour from an empty cup take care of yourself first. Now, let me say that again. You can't pour from an empty cup. Now, the way that that parallels us, you cannot take care of others without taking care of yourself first. You can't love others without loving yourself first. If there's nothing to give, then there's nothing to give. So make sure you are always taking care of yourself first. You are your number one priority because, you know, you can best help others by helping yourself first. So you're in your, your best and you're in your healthiest and your best mindset and you're the most mentally strong, physically, like whatever. Just take care of yourself so you are your best and you can give your best to people. So think on that as we go into the week. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.